Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Flacco's Ravens going up against Roethlisberger's Steelers. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Baltimore Ravens. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises. One of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. And they'll be led out by Big Ben, their veteran quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. Is it really true that last year he became just the 10th player in NFL history, the top 300 career touchdown How passes? About that? I mean, where is time gone? I feel like it was his rookie year, and he had that great winning streak to start off his career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the best part about his game, two Super Bowl rings. And his fifth Pro Bowl a year ago as well. Here's the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17 at a Pittsburgh first. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And that's complete to Jesse James. And he will be hit with a lot of force and spun down. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They go play action here on first down. Throwing over the middle. And it's incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. And a peek now at the offense for Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown just defies convention because when you look at his build, you see a slot receiver, a short, shifty guy. But he makes many of his plays on the outside part of the field like one of the taller, rangier receivers in the league. Excellent route runner, tremendous hands, and fantastic with the ball in his hands after the catch. Antonio Brown's one of the best ones out there. On second down, it's Bell. And he's brought down. A stealer first down on the pickup of 11 yards. 
Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. here on first down. Over the middle here to Brown. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And connection number one there on the game, Roethlisberger to Boney Tony. Antonio Brown, that's what his high school teammates used to call him. I wonder what they would call him now. I mean, <laughs> more muscular, more successful Boney Tony Brown, right? <laughs> I'd say you're probably right. It may be all of that. I'll still call him Boney Tony, but Ben Roethlisberger calls him my number one target. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Now the rookie from Pitt, this is James Conner. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Defensively, here's how they will line up for Baltimore. And defense, it was really good, paving the way yet again last week in the victory over the Lions. This is the Baltimore defense that they talk about playing every single year. And they had a concerted effort to get back to playing that type of defense in the preseason. Now, the number one team in takeaways added three more to that total against Detroit. Lead the league in interception with 20, total takeaways, 29. Back to the ground, this time with Bell. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On third down, Roethlisberger. He's got his tight end. That's James. Touchdown, Steelers. Jesse James, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Just how they wanted to start this one in the end zone on their first possession. And that just happened. How about that play right there? As you said, opening possession, setting the tone for everything. Now I'm going to look forward a little bit now because everyone should be celebrating his catch in the end zone. The tight end gets a little bit of love. But if you're a receiver on the team, you should be thinking to yourself, boy, oh boy, things are going to open up the rest of the game if they have to focus on him as well. That time, a nine-play drive. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Well on now to kick this one away. The return man, Chris Moore. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Joe Flacco bringing out the Baltimore Ravens. Get a look at their offense in a second. And coming into last week, by the way, was ranked number 31 in the league, but... They looked a lot better than that against Detroit. They certainly did. Joe Flacco looked like the Joe Flacco you expect to see week in and week out. 269 yards passing, two touchdowns, very efficient in what they're doing. And believe it or not, a team that had the 31st ranked offense going into last weekend now is 7-5 and five and in the playoffs if they began today.
Here's the first carry for Alex Collins. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers that can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Well, not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Second down, Flacco now. Trying to lay one up deep. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Operating off play action, Flacco. That is caught, it's Perriman. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. This seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Here's a first down run with Collins. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. In today's NFL, you're not just looking for height from your cornerbacks. You're looking for length in order to combat the tall, wide receivers that they have to play against each and every week. And Artie Burns has all of that. In addition, he has the ability to change direction and make plays on the football in the air. And finally, he's a willing tackler, which is really key for cornerbacks today. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. First carry for the vet, Danny Woodhead. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Barely got that snap off. Flacco now. Quick slant. That's caught by the veteran Macklin. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like your shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? Here's Collins. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. So we've got a second and five. It's Flacco. Throwing right, and that's complete. 
And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time and it moves the chains as well. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers, to, you know, change up their timing, they're going to get shredded as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if, as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So the chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from the six. Now a give to Collins. Diving for the end zone, and the ball's knocked out. Pardon me, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20-yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams call from the 10-yard line in the green zone. That's your money zone. He fumbles the ball inside the money zone. You have one job, take care of the ball. That didn't happen. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And certainly they'll be hoping to hit pay dirt like they did on the last drive. Got the football back, so a chance to go up two scores. And they haven't been tentative at all in this ball game because sometimes you start a game with your script to try and get information out of the opposing defense. How will they play you in certain situations? Sometimes you script to attack, and that's what I'm seeing so far. recovery. It's Roethlisberger. This is Bell on the dump off. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive. and comes right back and He's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him. And I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now a first down carry by Bell. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll go again with Bell. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end, 
and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Room here to run. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. 23 yards on the play. Snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 7-0 is our score. More from the Steel City coming up after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. six-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Snap it at one. Now it's Roethlisberger. And that'll be incomplete. Just looking at from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball of their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And Boswell's kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in.
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time, fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come away with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, but the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we're going to put some points up and have a little momentum going. They've got to find a way to just get it out of their minds, yeah. let it Short go, term memory. and move on to the next series. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Well, since that pass hit the ground, time to have some fun, Madden World. Marcus Peters, I know you saw this. You see him throw the flag into the stands last week against the Jets? A little bit of frustration because there had been a few pass interference calls, defensive holding calls against Kansas City. And this one happened in the end zone, so it set up another touchdown opportunity for the Jets. So Marcus Peters had had enough. None too happy. There's a flag on the ground. And he went ahead and expressed his displeasure by chucking it into the stands. My favorite part, though, was watching the crowd in the stands. Oh, they were taking selfies They with grabbed the flag. the flag, and they're all taking <laughs> selfies. First time has to be in NFL history, the fans taking selfies with a penalty flag. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave them with third and still seven yards to go. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense as that fell harmlessly to the ground. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. With it is Brown. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. Tough running there, that's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Thank you. 
Again, it's Bell. A beautiful spin and room to run. That burst good for 20 and a first down. I love football lingo and the evolution of it all. Nickel defense makes sense, right? Five, Five defensive DBs. backs. But then you go to six, what are you going to call that? And they call it a Double dime. it. <laughs> <laughs> a dime, which is just very simple for them. The math doesn't add up, but I know one thing. Offenses love to run against dime defenses. Typically, the bigger guys have an advantage against the smaller defensive backs when they're blocking downfield. Yeah, we saw that advantage right there. Burger on first down. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Terrell Suggs able to get him for a loss of about three. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Second down, Roethlisberger. And the pressure gets to him again. Terrell Suggs in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, we quit counting yardage on that one, didn't we? That was truly third and a mile, wasn't it? It was. I thought they might just go underneath, but they didn't. They wanted to get the first down there. Yeah, they tried to pick up the huge chunk unsuccessfully. I'm with you. I would have tried to take some yardage just to gain some field position. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Ravens offense now. They get ready to head back on the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big-time play and break through the barrier. yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. up over the 25 and the 26. Seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence 
to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Third down, Flacco from the gun. And he's got his man, that's Macklin. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around eight to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. They run with Collins, and he'll get this up to about the 40. Second down and four. And again, it's Collins. And an alley to run. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Operating out of the gun, Flacco, and that's complete. It's Watson, and he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. screen passes is they take a little time to develop and it can often hit big but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked yeah what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen now that allows your blitzers to get there Second down, Collins. And despite the good footwork, he'll be hit and dropped shy of the 45. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. The Ravens on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third down and 12. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. He gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told, but they're still looking at a fourth down. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. 
This officially a 55-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And Le'Veon Bell making his way back out onto the field now. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books. But it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means line. he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Burger to throw on second down. Over the middle complete. That's James. That catch good for five. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The Steelers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Here's Roethlisberger. That's complete. It's Bell. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Heinz Field after this. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record... We do not encourage that. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now it's Roethlisberger. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Willie Henry able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of three. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team that had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Roethlisberger. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The Steeler first down, Roethlisberger to Bryant. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. On 
first and ten. It's Roethlisberger. James has got it. Complete. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. And some options here for the offense on second and two. Now Roethlisberger to throw. And it fights through one man. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Steelers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Here's Roethlisberger. And James has it. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Roethlisberger to his big target, James. All six, seven of him for a Steeler first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Trying to get it there to Martavis Bryant. And now it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. And the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback.
And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Steelers are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Ravens just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's roll those highlights. Now third and eight. It's Roethlisberger to his big tight end. That's Jesse James. And it ends up working for a touchdown. Now they've got it at the 44-yard line. Terrell Suggs here gets to the quarterback for the sack. This ends up with a short loss in yardage. Continuing on the drive, Suggs is going to take down the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Now to late in the second, Henry's able to zero in on the QB here. This ends up with a short loss in yardage. So that'll do it for us here in Orlando. Let's get back up to Pittsburgh as we hand it back over to Brandon Guy. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because... We often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset, but typically halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution, or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. The drive starts with a run by Collins, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now Flacco. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Alex Collins that time. And it'll bring up third down. If you're a defender, one of the fun things about playing zone defenses, especially in today's football, is that it's not as static as it was in the good old days, meaning you just drop to a point and react into the football. Now you end up with a lot of man-to-man -man principles once you get into your zone defense. In other words, get to your assignment and then locate a guy coming into your area, and then you end up covering him almost man for man. That allows him to make more plays on the football like the one we just saw there. Flacco from the gun. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. So a good spin move, but not a whole lot to show after as he's taken down. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Sam Cook now 
On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Oh, nice move. <laughs> 12 yards on the return that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. We focus our attention now on the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And some space here. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, thought he was a big-time player, great potential but I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back, but now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. 3-4 defense, usually here you'll see the linebackers come up and make those plays, but the nose tackle, also vital. That was so vital because what you just pointed out, normally he eats up blockers that allows the linebackers to get to the ball carrier. In this case, he did his job and then some, and there was no gain at all for the runner. Roethlisberger will throw. This is Bell on the dump off. Call it a three-yard gain, and they're going to face a third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And now here come the Ravens. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. <laughs> now a play fake here on first down. His throw incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, the tight end. That'll bring up second down. That pass falling to the ground gives me a second to look back to November. Offensive and defensive rookies of the month, Charles. It was Alvin Kamara offensively and then Reuben Foster, the old Alabama player, defensively. No, I'm going to start with Reuben Foster because 
he was a high draft pick, ended up going in the first round, but didn't go as high as we expected due to some lingering shoulder issues at Alabama. But guess what? What a great pick for San Francisco. Now that he's managed to stay healthy, you're seeing all the things you expected to see. The speed, the agility, the ability to hit, diagnose plays, it's all in evidence. And Alvin Kamara, he just amazes us week in and week out with his playmaking ability. The Ravens on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Operating off play action, Flacco. He's gonna air one out. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Sam Cook now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Now Brown. <laughs> A good return there, call it 13 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. And the Steelers set to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, is it? They score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're gonna call their plays accordingly because what you really wanna do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. And he is knocked down from the side. Looks to be right around the 40. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. They find some open field here. Wrap up, still moving. That good for 22 and a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, gonna make that defense stand up and stop them. After that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 more yards there and another first down. Most players will tell you that night games, while they can be fun, they're really hard to prepare for because you wake up on game day and all you want to do is get to the stadium and let's get going. But you got to bank that fire a little bit and hold it until the evening. It's almost like a Broadway premiere. Got to wait until the nighttime to go out there in front of the bright lights. And boy, has he harnessed himself really well and now he's unleashing it on the opponents. So the run gets him the first and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. Throw left side complete. It's James. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Jesse James, his second touchdown of the night. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. 
Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, second half, no matter what, whether it's first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. So they're going to go for two. They'll try and run it up the middle. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. And he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead is going to stay right where it is. Boswell on now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And the Ravens taking the field. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. This is Collins on the handoff. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Now Collins, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It's a loss of two, now third down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. The Ravens on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and nine. From the gun, Flacco. And that is incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him. Don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger marches onto the field. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your quarter? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. 
and that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. So the offense has it first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Rodgers. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. While we've got a moment here, Frank Gore moved up two spots in his game Sunday against Jacksonville this last week, Charles. He's now top five rushers all time in the NFL. That's absolutely amazing when you think about it. The longevity of a career, the production of a career, and now you stop, I don't care who you are, you start thinking legacy, right? And think about who he moved past. He moved past Jerome Bettis, Hall of Famer, or Damian Tomlinson, Hall of Famer. If you're Frank Gore, you're thinking your credentials are going to be up for the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Start measuring for that jacket. He's at 13,697 yards. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Now it's Roethlisberger, and that's incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They go play action here on first down. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Cameron Hayward in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. And that's the second sack of the game, but this player, 
disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. Second down, Flacco now. That's caught out left by Perriman. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and 14. Now it's Flacco. And this is going to be incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Here's Sam Cook now, standing just outside his own goal line. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Brown with a stick skills. So possession goes over here on the punt. The Steelers offense now, they head back onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. <laughs> On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, with the breather, shift gears to the NFL coaching news that certainly everyone was talking about this week. New York Giants parting ways, Charles, with Ben McAdoo. And that's the first time that the Giants organization has made a move during the season since 1976. When they relieved Bill Arnsbarger of his duties as the head coach, they also uh, also told the general manager his services were no longer needed. So they're going to clean house and start fresh again in 2018. What a tough way to go for the New York Giants. It's been an interesting year for them. It's just a franchise, obviously, with so much pride in their history. We'll see if they can turn it around. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, Hard to get them started again occasionally. And the Steelers on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Here's Jordan Berry now. He's been terrific so far. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive.
A give right to Collins. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They've been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Operating out of the gun. Flacco caught by the tight end Watson. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him. You know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Passing play, Flacco. And he's got his man, that's Macklin. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve we saw right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him too. taken down one quarter remains here in this thursday night matchup we'll return with more after this this is the nfl and it's on ea sports back now in pittsburgh it's the ravens with possession of the football but trailing on the big board as we get set for the fourth Second down. Oh, look over the middle, and he's got Perriman. And oh, he coughed it up, and it's picked up by the Steelers. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Okay, this isn't one where you want to take the game tape and hold it up as an example, do you? I mean, you talk about frustrating all the way through. And that last error, I think that crystallizes it, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's been representative of their entire game still being shut out. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. They'll give this to Bell running right. Down to about the 22 here. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there, and I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory, and, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't, because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think he may want to keep them cranking high right here. See if they stay on the ground for second down. A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. 
You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. Here it's third and two. They'll try and run for it with Bell. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And that one ups the lead to 22 to nothing. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken at his four. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks at the 24-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> First and 10 here for Flacco. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, and it's second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Flacco to throw again on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Ravens on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 10. Flacco looks to throw. Looking left side, that's caught by Macklin. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. And that's incomplete. He was looking for Brashad Perriman. And that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Yeah. 
Flacco will take to the air again. Quick slant. That's caught by the veteran Macklin. And he's brought down. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. Been that kind of game throwing the football so far. Nothing going right offensively. Incomplete on first down, now Flacco on second. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Only three yards on the catch, it's third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Ravens on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and seven. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Cameron Hayward bringing the pressure again, and that is his third sack here tonight. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it is incomplete. John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it. This time doesn't work out. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. They had the double-digit lead at halftime, and they have continued to roll. They're hard to stop right now. I think what we're seeing is an example of a team that has it figured out in this ball game. And whatever the adjustments are the defense has made, <laughs> hasn't slowed them, it. hasn't phased them at all. They either anticipated them or they've been so far ahead that they just can't catch up. Now it's just a search to add to the lead. A give to Bell. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Here we go with second and seven. The give is to Bell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him six on the play, and that is going to set up a third and one. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck fifty now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. 
And the Steelers on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. Play action. Now Roethlisberger. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that will loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. On first down, Flacco. And Watson has it, right side. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On second down, Flacco to throw. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, it really turned it loose, didn't it? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Macklin. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. They go pass again with Flacco, and he's got it. Got his man on the end route, complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it, because if you go lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman, certainly flinched there before the snap. A good call. 
That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt Let's like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. Once more, it's Flacco. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. On fourth down, it's Collins. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give him 17 on that pickup. And that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons, the ability to really hit on a big run. Last year, their longest run was just 41 yards all season, four yards per carry near the bottom of the league. Collins and he's going to be met at about the 43 give him a couple on the carry there second and eight not too many offenses want to turn down long drives but when you're down what they are they've got to pay it off with some points second down following the run now flags come in I think one of the Ravens got going a little early so that'll back him up five. Still second down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Second down, Flacco now. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. From the gun, Flacco. And this is going to be incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it. This time doesn't work out. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. So that's the second time this game they've given it up on fourth down. They're now one for three on fourth down conversion tries. But they must feel good about what they're doing, right? They continue to go for it on fourth down. Give the defense a lot of credit, though. They've stopped them two out of three times. Usually, you have fourth down plays that you have dialed up and ready to go and you think are going to be successful. Not so far in this game. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. He has really been buoyed here by a strong running attack. They've been great on the ground. And have enjoyed the entire process because oftentimes when you're running the football well, that's much more of a team effort. Everyone has to come together to make it work. Offensive line, wide receivers, the tight ends when they're on the field, maybe an extra running back leading. It is a really nice thing to see, a team type of thing. And guess what? The 
quarterback, he can get out of the locker room a whole lot faster after this game. <laughs> the interview is going to go to the running back. Yeah, now we hit the home stretch here in the fourth with their lead. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. tonight he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage officially no gain on the play and they're left with a third and eight well he didn't make headway on that one but he's had plenty of carries all night long i just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much and the steelers on third down they're hitting at just 30 percent three for ten this is third and eight here's bell no gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. One of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? It's like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Setting up to throw, Flacco. That's caught out left by Perriman. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. second down play will get whistles and a timeout as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. So the offensive unit called the T.O. and now we are ready to resume play. the gun and that will be in 
incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Third down, Flacco from the gun. That is caught, it's Perriman. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. The Raven passing game getting in sync, another first down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Now the offense lining up first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Throw right side taken in by Wallace. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. here on first down and that will be incomplete they were going for a consolation TD but it was not to be and time has run out now on this game so Charles are able to complete what so often seems to be elusive a shutout in the NFL and maybe what's fitting is they ended the game on the field that defensive unit on the field what an exclamation mark and probably felt like they could go another 60 minutes without anyone putting points on the board against them. That's the confidence you gain throughout when you're pitching a shutout, and they're going to leave the stadium feeling like they're all 10 feet tall. That's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.